G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy. We are back once again with just the tips. D4 damager, power to the people, and we're up to round 10. Round 10, can you believe it? This season, and we say the same thing every year, the season's getting away from us. Thankfully, it's a slightly longer season than usual, uh, but today we've got a very intriguing round of matchups once again, and I look forward to it. So as usual, we'll go through how last week went for myself and also all of our weekly winners. I got six out of nine, which, you know, looking at how some other people did, I, I think one of the best scores this week, certainly in the members competition, was seven. I'm happy with six, but there's a howler on here that I'm not happy about at all. I am certain... And I could be wrong, but I'm certain I tipped Essendon to beat GWS and I must have hit GWS and I'm angry about it because I was so confident, you know, without checking my results throughout the weekend, I was like, yeah, it's sweet. I must have, uh, I don't know, seven out of nine or whatever. Looked down and I inexplicably tipped GWS and I'm sad about it. I'm really not happy. I promise I didn't change that. I'm so annoyed. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, tipped Carlton correctly, tipped Geelong to beat Port Adelaide. I honestly think most people would have. Tip the Saints to beat Hawthorne. I did think about tipping Hawthorne, but the, you know, the Sicily factor as well. He was an out for that game. That made me confident in Kilda win, but got that wrong. But every result after that, I got right. So overall, six out of nine is not too bad. I'm hanging in like, certainly in the top half of the competition. I think I'm like 449th, and we've got over a thousand people in that league. So by all means, if you still want to join the league, you still can. There's no reason you can't. Everything that you need to know, like our fantasy competition, it's all in the description of this video. We'll quickly go through all the weekly winners for the True Footy competition. So our members round winner was Real Swift with seven out of nine and a margin of four. Great tips. And it just shows that this week was particularly tough because seven doesn't normally win a weekly competition. Shaky was our general tipping competition winner for the week with eight correct tips. So no one got a perfect nine. So well done, Shaky. The leader of our members competition is still Graz with 57. That's great going. Graz has been top of the tree for most of the season so far. And the overall winner for our general general tipping competition with over a thousand people is a new name, Mystic Di Pasquale, which is an outstanding name. I haven't seen that before. Uh, 59 correct tips and a margin of 197. And in our fantasy competition, Hayden Jelmy reclaims the lead, if I'm not mistaken, with an average of 20-33. I had a great round of fantasy this weekend. I thought I did pretty well, but it seems like everyone did. I think I got like 2160 or something like that in that ballpark, but I only moved up like 15 spots. So Everyone did well, so there you go. Well done, guys. All right, it's time to crack into just the tips for round 10. We start off with another Darwin game between the Gold Coast Suns and the Geelong Footy Club. The Gold Coast coming off a pretty sizable win against North Melbourne, and Geelong lost their last two now, um, most recently against Port Adelaide and Melbourne before that. Two close losses against two quality teams. How much do we read into that? I think you'd be silly to write Geelong off too much. Um, you know, I think it's telling that, uh, particularly against Port Adelaide, you know, what did they get? 49 points down, something ludicrous. And, uh, you know, nearly came back and won. So I don't think they've completely gone to sleep. They just had a really bad start to that game. And both Melbourne and Port Adelaide are pretty good sides. So long story short, I don't think, um, you know, they're in a huge spot of bother. It still hurts to lose two games in a row. And Gold Coast have just been a little bit... Um, up and down, or when I say up and down, they've actually been remarkably consistent in the sense that they beat the teams you'd expect them to beat and lose to the teams better than them. And that's why this presents as a, a tough, tough game for them. I think they're undefeated in Darwin though, which is an interesting stat. Although I did say the other day in a video, I don't know how much of that comes down to fixture. You know, they don't usually play big, strong clubs or strongly performing clubs in Darwin. So I don't know if that's, um, you know, a relevant stat. Gold Coast did beat Geelong last year, I reckon. It was like round four but it wasn't Metricon. Does that make a difference? Again, I still think Geelong is a much better team than they were last year. So long story short, I don't think Geelong are gonna let themselves lose three in a row. And while Gold Coast absolutely could win this game, they could, and I do think maybe the conditions might be suited to them in the due. I still think Geelong will hold on and win. I think it'll be close. I reckon Gold Coast will give them a good run for their money but the older and more experienced team will win out with seven points, but eh, that could go either way. Sydney versus Carlton. Sydney, you know, haven't done much wrong <laughs> at all. They've had one loss to Richmond early this year and um, won their last five and most recently a big win in Perth over Fremantle. And just look remarkably consistent. They're going to be a really tough game here for Carlton. Blues are coming off a very good win against the Dees. They got something like six goals in front. They keep the first six of the game. I think they led by 38 with their biggest lead. And, um, you know, Melbourne came back hard 
thanks to Christian Petrarca largely. Petrarca was fantastic, you know, as one of the best players in the game. Five goals, 21 possessions. Carlton have been a mixed bag over their last five, though. Um, they've beaten GWS, they've beaten the Ds, and I think they've lost their other three games, once to the Cats, once to the Crows. This might be game of the round. I'll probably nominate it now. Sydney versus Carlton should be a high standard of game, and they, they played last year in the elimination final. The Blues got the job done. Um, this is being at the SCG. Makes me think that the Swans should have their measure, and I, I think it's hard to tip against Sydney. Like, it really is. You know, I, I think Carlton are equipped to win this game. But Sydney are just, like, number one across the board for, you know, so many different stats this year. And I think they're going to hold on to win this game by 22 points. Collingwood play Adelaide at the MCG. This one could be juicy because... Adelaide have gotten close to beating them at the G, you know, I think multiple times. And Adelaide are in some better form. I think they've only lost one of their last five. Most recently, drew to the Brisbane Lions. Look to have found their groove a little bit. Now, Collingwood are one of the best teams in the competition now. I, I, I mean, I say now, but I mean, increasingly, they have proven themselves that they're back and their pressure and uh, ferocity was clear to see against West Coast. And not that West Coast is a tough opponent, but Collingwood were very, very good. Now, elephant in the room, Collingwood are dealing with a lot of injuries right now. I don't think that really held them back against West Coast at all. I think their midfield was dominant and that was largely when they won this game. And I know they're missing Jordan Dugowie, but I think a lot of their injuries are front half. So if Collingwood can win the midfield battle, their back line is still really strong. I still have confidence that they should. They should beat the Crows, but Adelaide might be a trickier opponent than West Coast were. And Adelaide seemed to play the MCG and Collingwood specifically quite well. So I'm tipping a thriller here. I really am. And I think, you know, while Collingwood withstood their injuries really well last week, they also played with a lot of energy. Like they came out with a point to prove. It was almost like, yeah, we've got a lot of injuries here. Let's not let this slip against a poor team in West Coast. Let's make a statement and play really well because I think they kind of came out at 100% intensity for a large portion of that game. And they look fantastic and could have won by more. It was a fairly even second half in the end. Long story short, I think Collingwood are gettable, but I think it would be too brave for me to tip against them. Even with their injuries, they should be all right. You know, some of the mature age players that have come in have looked really good. So I'm going to tip a thriller because these two sides tend to produce thrillers and I do look at head-to-head -head quite a lot. So I'll say Collingwood by... Let's go 14 points. GWS versus the Bulldogs at the Sydney Showground, uh, whatever it's called now. Is it Sco Skoda? No, it's not Skoda. NG, NG, that's what it was. I had to look that up. I don't even know if Skoda was the most recent one. Wasn't it Giant before that? I, I don't know, who cares? They're playing at GWS's legitimate home ground as opposed to Monica. The Giants are in some patchy form at the moment. I think, I don't know how much of that is down to Lockie Whitfield being shut down, you know, routinely over the last month or so they are a very good team but um you know i think they've lost more than they've won in their last five and last week came up short against the red hot essendon essendon are a very good side at the moment so it's hard to get a real read on that to some extent they're under pressure at the moment the giants sit sixth and it wasn't so long ago they sat third and a genuine premiership contender and they've just fallen out of that top group at the moment based on current form which is very temporary na naturally the bulldogs big win over richmond last week the week before that they lost to hawthorne they're a little bit up and down. They sit four and five. And while it's hard to trust them, it is hard to trust them, they are still very talented. And I've done a whole video on the Western Bulldogs, if you want to go look that out. I had a look at their list and how much we should really be expecting in this Bulldog side. And I've made the case that it's actually younger than you think it is. There's a, there's a strong top end. The middle part of their list is probably underperforming, hasn't really come on. The young talent on their list is outstanding. And at any given time, like even though what's Jamara's in his fourth season Norton's 24 turning 25 like a lot of those guys are young but they're still talented enough that at any game they could they could really get a hold of a team so that will make them a wild card for so much of this year I reckon this one's a tricky one last year the Giants did beat them towards the end of the season I think it was a Ballarat came from behind um and I think GWS were in great form and the Dogs weren't oh, this one's not simple I think I'm going to tip the Giants here but I think I could see this going either way I'll tip the Giants by four goals I think they've probably that's probably the level of favoritism that they have in this game i'm not sure about it I like i've lost a little bit of faith with gws and this is becoming an increasingly difficult round to tip st kilda versus Fremantle at marvel stadium so i had it in my head that st kilda had a real knack for beating Fremantle at marvel and that's not the case so i'll get the stats up so this is their head-to-head -head. so last year they did beat them early in the season at marvel stadium 
Now, St Kilda also finished sixth last year and Fremantle fell out of the finals. The year before that, Fremantle had a big win against them at Marvel Stadium and they also lost to them in Perth. Actually, that's kind of interesting considering Fremantle were a good team in 2022. 2019, both of these sides missed the finals. Fre uh, St Kilda won that game by three points. So in the end, like I don't think there's actually too much to read from that. And, you know, in terms of the form line, St Kilda are in horrific form and I think are underperforming and then again that just means that in any given week they could click back into gear I think there's still a good side underneath there they're just out of form and Fremantle again like also played quite poorly against Sydney for me that was you know polish and end product and mid forward connection but they still generated a lot of shots on goal they only just kicked four goals out of 19 shots on goal so I find myself wanting to tip both of these teams and that's been a story of most of this video so far. Um, confidence will be down for St Kilda. There's no doubt about that. I, I think I think I'm going to tip Fremantle here. They've had two real outlier performances, the Western Derby and Sydney. Um, against Sydney, maybe some mitigating factors there. West Coast are just a juggernaut, so they're always going to lose that game. I think their best footy stacks up, and I think they've been better than St Kilda this year. So I'm going to tip the Dockers to win by 16 points. Brisbane Lions versus Richmond at the Gabba. This one probably doesn't need too much thought and deliberation. With all due respect, Richmond fans, I think Richmond's season seems to be trending in one way. Brought in a few players this week, probably playing a little bit underdone. Lose three more during their game. Um, it's just been the tail of their season so far and then ultimately lost by 91 points or something to the Western Bulldogs. Brisbane would have had a really tough like clash against the Crows last week. They ended in a draw. Fatigue could be a factor. Last game of the round, so presumably have uh, one day's less rest and also dealing with some injury issues of their own. But uh, at the moment, it hasn't reached that tipping point where it's affecting their performance too much. Again, I, I think this one is fairly simple to tip. Sorry, Richmond fans, but Brisbane at the Gabba. I mean, the one one game need to be fair this year was against the Gold Coast Suns, but I think Richmond are in a bit of a world of pain at the moment. So I'll tip this one by probably, I'm probably going to go at 40 points, yeah. Essendon versus North Melbourne. Now, Essendon sit, well, fifth on the current ladder in front of me right now, uh, but third on the actual ladder before this round. So they have been really good this year. There's no doubt about it. And claimed the scalp that they were seeking in GWS this weekend and have only lost two games this year to Sydney and Port Adelaide and Drew with Collingwood and are justifiably one of the form teams of the competition. So this is going to be a tough ask for North Melbourne. Clear disparity in quality between these two sides. Again, I'm going to make the case for a lot of these videos, but North Melbourne will win a game this year and it could absolutely come any given week because young sides do tend to bob up randomly. But this is probably not the week, right? This is probably not the week. Essendon are a very good side. What Essendon have struggled with, if you look at their percentage, is 98.3. Uh, they haven't shown an ability to really, you know, put their foot on the throat of teams. So if there's a chance that Essendon don't put this game away early, could North Melbourne make it close at the end? Potentially. But I'm going to tip on what I've seen so far, and I'm going to say Essendon by, you know, 31 points. It could be more than that, but Essendon, again, look at their percentage. Not a side that really blows teams away, so 31 points. Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne. This game could be better than it looked on paper a few weeks ago. So Port Adelaide coming off a fantastic win against the Cats at GMHBA without their skipper, Connor Rosie. Fantastic win. Got 49 points up or something like that. Geelong came back in the way that you knew that they would, and Port Adelaide just hung on. They just hung on. Nonetheless, an outstanding result. Like that, They haven't beaten them there since 2007. When Dom Cassisi kicked that winner, I still remember that game like it was yesterday because I am old. Um, Hawthorne have won three of the last four. Um, that started with a win over North Melbourne. Then they beat St Kilda and the Western Bulldogs and you know, are finally finding that confidence and repeating a little bit of their form last year where they started the season quite poorly and then it clicked partway through the season. And we may or may not expect a consistent young horse on side week to week. I'm probably not expecting them to be consistent. At the same time though, on current form, this game could be closer than we once expected. I think there is always a chance of an upset with Hawthorne, this particular Hawthorne group, but I'm gonna tip the home side to win and if they play well, they should win this by 38 points. But it's weird. I'm going to tip a healthy margin. 38 points is actually not that big of a margin. It's just that I tend to tip closer games than what it will actually happen. So 38 points will probably be my bet for this game. West Coast versus Melbourne at Optus Stadium. Um, Collingwood 
smashed West Coast last week. I thought West Coast hung in there really well in the second half. Sure, there's an argument that Collingwood put the queue in the rack. I think in the third term, I don't know if that's the case. I think Collingwood played pretty well and West Coast also played well. They just couldn't kick any goals. They just kicked like five or six behinds. But um, either way, I, I felt kind of encouraged by that because of the horrific form that West Coast has showed in the past. I think they've shown some resilience this year, bearing in mind they're missing their top contributors. While Collingwood were as well, West Coast are not as equipped to deal with losing Elliot Yo and Jake Waterman. I think they held up pretty well in the second half. So the good news for them is that Yo is possible to come back this week, as is Jake Waterman from that concussion. Um, Jeremy McGovern, that looked like a bad injury at the time. He might be playing this week. So those are important ins for considering how big a margin to tip in this game. Melbourne, again, they, they lost to the Blues on the weekend and tough opponent, quality opposition, and they're still looking all right. They beat to the Cats the week before. Um, so, you know, Gorn, Petrarca, Oliver, Viney in particular, like these guys are probably going to run rings around West Coast. It's just a matter of the margin. So what's tend to happen in West Coast games is that particularly their losses, you know, they'll generally concede a lot more inside 50s. And it's their forward line efficiency that will dictate the margin. If you look at the Essendon games and the Gold Coast games, statistically, those games could have blown out more, but West Coast were really accurate. So that will probably dictate the margin in this game. If West Coast have 20 shots on goal, you know, they might kick, 14 6, that seems really unlikely. But, you know, they might kick 12 goals 8, or they could kick 6 goals 14. Probably overanalyzing this game. We all know how, who's going to win this game. I think the D's play up the stadium and West Coast in particular quite well. So I'm going to say 56 points. So there you have it, guys. That is my ladder. I've got Sydney, Geelong, Essendon third still. Uh, I don't think the top three have changed. Essendon's third on the ladder currently. The Demons to fourth. GWS back up to fifth. I don't even remember what the actual ladder was before this game. Fremantle back into the eighth. Collingwood in seventh. That makes sense. Uh, bottom four exactly the same as it is. So not a whole lot of movement. Oh, goodness. Carlton's in ninth. Forgive me. Carlton is in ninth. So this Sydney game is quite big, you know. That's bizarre, isn't it? You know, Carlton just beat the D's in you know, one of the best games of the season. Heavyweight clash. If they lose the next week, they might drop to ninth. That obviously depends on whether Fremantle beats St Kilda as well. So there's a few moving parts here. But let me know in the comments, guys, what are your tips? Your game of the round, I think that's got to be Sydney versus Carlton. Upset of the round is probably Adelaide versus Collingwood. Watch this, this space. I reckon those two teams tend to produce close games. That's really my logic for that. But as always, I look forward to your comments and your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.